Today you're going to learn some of the pure power of Hugo to be able to create via scripting very complex sites without any real effort, without any kind of dynamic site side crap. Um, it's, it's, we're going to do, here's what we're going to do in this video. I actually have my personal website pulled up here as an example, and we're going to use this just because I already have pages created for this. What we're going to do here is something that a lot of sites have. Let's say I want on my main page of all the blog articles I have, let's say on my main page, I want to have a, a, a kind of a list, but really like a bunch of previews of all of the blog posts I have that have the title, they have the date, the link, they have a summary of uh, whatever, you know, what, what the blog post is about, and maybe some other metadata and stuff like that. Um, suppose we want that on our front page that people can kind of look at things, browse it, and follow them if they want. We're going to show you how easy that is to do in Hugo, um, and uh, we'll learn some other stuff in the meantime. So here I actually have, uh, notice I have here, I should probably be clear, we are in my websites directory in, uh, this, uh, in this folder right here. I'm going to go into the layouts folder and you'll see, see that in the layouts folder uh, there is a shortcodes uh, subdirectory. And of course if it doesn't exist in your website you can go ahead and make that shortcodes directory. Um, and in that we are going to create a file that uh, we are going to create the rules, the, the script to generate all of this. And it's not it's not difficult at all because we're gonna look at Hugo variables. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna create a file and I'm just gonna say, you know, we'll call it for video. Okay, dot HTML. And this again is in the shortcodes directory. Um, and at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this stuff that's on my website, right? So I'm just gonna delete all this just for the example. So we are gonna, I'm gonna just put some random stuff uh, random text in this for video shortcode and I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it here by saying for video the name of the file uh, notice that it's inside cur two curly brackets and one carrot bracket thing whatever they're called greater than or less than sign um, and I'm gonna save that and you'll see that now my main site has this lol lol thing here lol 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 and that, of course, is it just printing out the content of this uh, shortcode. I'm actually going to go ahead and we, we don't need to modify that terminal at all whatsoever. So uh, a couple things about shortcodes. Right off the bat, shortcodes, even if you're not putting any kind of programming into them or any kind of like for loops or anything like that, shortcodes can functions, function as macros, right? If you want to just, if you have text that you're repeating on a bunch of different pages, like that you need to put in different places, a short code is a good way of just abbreviating that. So if you just have some information like this highly important information, you don't need anything else. You can just like put this content in your Hugo page without any without any trouble, right? And of course, this is supposed to be in HTML, just to be absolutely clear. Uh, I, I know it's technically not right now, but you know, let's okay. Now it's now it's HTML text, right? <laughs> well, either way. Um, so, but let's actually start doing what we, what I set up we were going to do. So I want to loop through, I basically want to have all the pages on my website and we're going to want to, again, have a little preview of each of them. Now I'm going to go ahead and write some stuff and then I'll explain what this is doing. Uh, we are going to say range site pages, okay, and then we're going to say in, and then we're going to say in the middle here we'll say title. Okay, so uh, actually I'm going to put in some uh, a line break there. So uh, let's save and look at that and we'll see now it's printing out actually the names of all the pages on my website. So what this thing is doing on the right, what range does, is you give it something more or less to loop over. Range is basically like a for loop. So it takes all of the elements in site pages and for each of those things it does this. It prints out title, in our case, and then it prints out uh, a line break, right? If we got rid of this line break, just to be clear, it would print everything, you know, just without breaking a line. So that's why I put that in. Or we can do something, you know, more, I don't know, syntactically correct. We could do something like this. We could say, let's say, open a, a list, close the list, and for each of these elements in the range, we're going to have that in a list item, okay, hypothetically, right? So we could do something like that. Um, so that's all this is doing. 
but let's explain what uh, so what is this site stop pages for what is this dot title for just to be specific uh, notice I've pulled two uh, pages up web pages up uh, in the Hugo documentation and I will go ahead and say this I, I recommend if you're on a desktop especially go ahead and pull these pages up because you're gonna want to play around with these uh, Hugo um, actually has pretty decent web documentation which is very rare among a lot of projects um, they actually list things out like economically simply and like tell you basically all the stuff you can do um, now this first thing here is a site variable it's prefaced by dot site and this is something that is basically site-wide so dot site dot pages is going to be all the pages in your website right um, and then this thing here which does not have site in front of it this is as we're looping through those pages we can also call one of these page variables in fact we can call all of these page variables if we want this is all the stuff we have to work with or we can use while we're going through those pages okay so site variables and page variables you can check these out we'll be using some in this video okay all right so let me save this again actually let's put the line break in uh, actually you know what we, what we're actually going to do here's what i'm going to do i'm going to put the title i'm going to put that in a uh you know give it give it kind of a uh, uh heading or whatever so notice a couple things about this firstly there's some weird page titles here so there's like crypto software that isn't ta uh, uh, capitalized there's tags these are not actually pages that i've created on my website really what we want if we look at site variables there's pages there's uh i'm gonna be searching a lot of pages but there's also a, a site variable called uh, regular oops, regular pages okay and what that is is well well actually let's just look what it is <laughs> why why find it in the documentation when i know the answer anyway so if you put in regular pages you'll see that all those other little uh tag titles and stuff they disappeared so just to be clear about the what what the difference is pages is all the sites on your all the pages on your website that you've created plus the ones that hugo auto generates so it auto generates tags uh and stuff based on the or pages based on the tags that i've created the dot pages variable includes all of those but dot regular pages does not it is just the files that you have created so that's really what we want here just to be clear okay so now we're using this but um, I'm gonna show you some things that you can do in addition to this so you can pipe this content and you're gonna guess what this does if you pipe this into first five what do you think that does Wow you're so smart it actually takes that that for loop and only takes the first five elements in it right so it it only takes the first if you only want a preview of the the first five or the most recent five it goes through those or if you want 10 it goes through those right notice also you can do other things um now by default i think uh, i don't think it lists it here but let's say um uh, list uh hugo page uh by date something like that um so one thing you'll notice here well you might not notice because you don't know how my website works but by default it's actually looping through these kind of in uh date order right so this is um th these are like the most recent articles that i've made and if you go back further here these are like the oldest ones okay um so by default it's actually looping through these kind of by dates but if you look at the hugo documentation i want to say i think it's in this page i think it's in this page what it's actually oh yeah here so it's actually looping through by these variables it's looping through by weight and all my pages you can set custom weights for pages in hugo i don't have any custom weights so it's kind of ignoring that then it sorts it by date then link title then file path right but you can change this by putting in things by like by weight or by date specifically so let's actually do this let's say by date at the end of regular pages and you'll now see um, what it's actually done is it's now linking them. It's or well now it's looping through them, but it has the things that are most original at the very top, whereas most recent down here. Okay, and we can reverse that. We can reverse that saying reverse. Okay, we got a kind of long command here, um, but so you know that that's just if you want to customize, you can customize. You cannot just put you can. You can put by date you can put by publish date a bunch of other things uh length oh that's an option let's let's do that so let's say by length 
So you have a couple of different options even before we get into the kind of stuff that you can do. Um, what exact way you want to go through these by, right? So this is by length, these are the, the shortest, uh, these are the longest, you can flip those around if you want by putting reverse, blah, 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 okay? So um, I'm gonna leave that as it is right now. I'm actually gonna make more changes to this, um, I think at the end of the video, but we're, let's just get to the content, right? The, the, the meat of uh, the page variables, really. So as I said, uh, now that we've dealt with our range, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna say we're happy with this right now, we can use these different page variables to refer to stuff in the page. Um, so for example, title, we already have here. Title prints the title. We can also, if we wanted, we can include the entire content of the article with content, right? With the content thing, and that'll list out literally everything. Um, but really, I'm gonna put summary, okay? Now, what summary is, I talked about this in the previous video, it takes kind of the, the most, uh, the, the first content of that page and estimates where you want it to end, you know, basically just gives you a snippet of it. So that's what we're gonna use for our preview. So actually already it looks okay, but we need a couple things. Firstly, we don't have any links to the actual pages. So we gotta, we gotta put those in, all right? So I'm gonna probably want, uh, you might want two kinds of links. Uh, and we're, we're just using normal HTML syntax here. So I'm going to want to put a link, let's say uh, we're gonna make our titles a link here. And what we'll need here is uh, there's a link here that's like permalink, okay, rel permalink, right? Actually, we can go ahead and put it in, whatever. Uh, I don't need to show it to you in the documentation. rel permalink. Um, and that is going to refer, we're gonna, we can uh, key over these. Right, or we can click on them and see that they're actually working. This is the this is the actual link, the relative link uh, within the site. You can actually see it in the source. Let's see. I think if you just put permalink, it's including like the domain name, which is kind of funky or whatever. Uh, actually, let me just let me just double check that. Let's. Uh, it won't make a difference in function, but it's kind of ugly on this site. Yeah. So it puts like the full domain link. But so I prefer to link things with rel permalink because. Honestly, it looks trashy if you uh, do otherwise. Um, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it depends. I don't know how like browsers or whatever call it, but it might be less efficient. Like in turn, it might be making more DNS queries. I don't actually know about that. Someone who knows more about how that stuff works could probably say. Either way, uh, so we have links here, but let's say uh, we want something at the end that's like read more. That's a pretty common way. That's a common way to uh, have a little link here. So I'm actually gonna copy this. Let's, let's put it at the end of the summary. Let's put in uh, read more. Okay, so now we have two little links per article, right? Uh, and of course we notice that you can style this in whatever way that you want, okay? So I could put this, I could put this in article tags. I'm a big fan of semantic tagging. I know I said this. I know it's totally soy dev, but I like it. Um, or you could put in, you know, line breaks, uh, horizontal line, horizontal rules or whatever they are. Um, so you can style this in however, whatever way you want. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll actually get rid of these so it's not like in the way. Um, but here's the tricky thing about the read more thing. Here's something to think about. If we scroll down, here's a really small um, post. And this is just, uh, now technically speaking, if we click on read more, we're not reading more. We're only looking at the content that is already here. There's no like extra information, right? Um, so if you want to be a perfectionist about this. One nice thing about the page variables is there's this cool little variable called um, truncated, okay? So what truncated does is in the page, if the summary is a truncated version of the article, that is if it doesn't contain all of the stuff, this variable returns true, otherwise it returns false. So let's actually use this, okay? So what we can do here, what we can do before this read more thing, we can say if truncated, and then um, after it, we can say end. And what that is gonna do is for each article, instead of just printing that stuff, notice that the read more has now disappeared from this page. It was a liar anyway, right? Because we're not actually reading more. Uh, but what this is doing here is it's saying for each of these pages, if the summary is a truncated version of the full article, uh, we will link, we will have the little read more link. Otherwise, just end, right? You know, we don't need to go through it. Um, so that's a nice little feature to have as well. So let's uh, start putting some more metadata and in, in other stuff in here. Um, there are a couple things we can have. For example, word count, 
that, that's kind of nice. People like having those sometimes. I don't know if they're low attention span and they don't want to read, you know, a thousand, two thousand words or something. Um, at the end of this, we could put, uh, let's put another break here and say, uh, let's just say word count. Word count. Uh, maybe I should put it in some kind of, I don't know, heading or something. Eh, I think it's kind of ill-advised to put that in the heading. Uh, who's, who cares? We're just, we're just not going to say. Uh, so we're going to say word count words. Okay. Oops. What did I do? To, oh, it's not two words, silly. And it's, yeah, okay. So now you'll see in each case, Hugo, it, because it's so smart, um, it has uh, it has put a preview of all of the different word, however many words you have in each article. So you can say, oh, this is nearly a thousand words. This is over a thousand words. This is five words, right? Nice and simple, okay? Um, and I, I wanna say, I know nowadays people, a lot of sites will have like that minutes estimator. I'm, I, do they have something like that? Oh, reading time. Okay, I didn't even think, I was gonna suggest like, oh, you could probably script this in. Uh, but I guess, let's see, I guess um, Hugo has this. Let's see what that looks like. So one, I guess that's minute. Yeah, okay, so yeah, we can, okay, I didn't even know that. See, I'm learning stuff in this video. Wow, that's fantastic. So if you don't like that, you can say uh, reading time, minute, read. Okay, so now one minute read, one minute read, 10 minute. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that's cool. 13 minute read. That's, oh, okay. I'm, I'm happy that I found that. I'm glad that I thought of that in this video. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Um, so anyway, let's put dates. Dates are pretty common as well, obviously, especially if you have time sensitive stuff, you wanna have some kind of date. So we can actually go up here. Let's go, let's put date at the beginning. Why not? We're, I don't know. I noticed that I'm not like, like people complained in the last video, well, wow, this, this site looks bad. Why aren't you styling this? Because this isn't a video about CSS. You're a big boy. You know how to use CSS. Same thing applies here. Don't complain about how... I, I'm showing you how to do things within a script. I'm not telling you, you know, whatever. How to beautify it, because I don't care about that. Um, that's your job. You're supposed to be a professional developer, aren't you? Um, so anyway, um, if you put in date, you will now see that it actually prints out this massive date thing that actually includes the exact time. And specifically, I want to say this is the exact time that when you first create the article and it puts that date in the metadata. But here's the thing is this, you know, this is ugly, obviously. So we'll probably want to format this in a different way. Actually, let's just make it bigger just for this video. Instead of having BR, let's, yeah, let's, let's bite the bullet and put it in like a heading tag. You know, I don't endorse doing that in real life, but whatever, for the video, it makes sense. Um, so what you can do with date actually is date has this sub command called format. And then you can provide a format for what it looks like. And Hugo is nice and intuitive. I know that like when people are using like date on the command line, dude, I have to look up what all of these symbols mean. Oh my goodness. Like I, I totally forget like, oh, is M like is lowercase M month or is it, uh, you know, whatever, who cares? You know, who, who cares? But um, in this case, what you can do, Hugo. So the thing you have to remember about the date format command is that there's a very special date and that is January 2nd, 2006. I don't know why it's they chose that, but what you do is you take that date, let's say January 2nd, 2006, and put it in the format command. And based on how you format that date, it will format all the other dates. So for example, I said Jan, therefore all of these months will be abbreviated. Next I have the, the day and it's gonna be after that, then the year. I mean, we can move this around. If, you, uh, if you're in one of the many countries where the day's in front, you can put that in front. Or notice also, so on days that are one digit, if we get rid of this initial zero, they will disappear there. We can say, you know, January, uh, write out the full thing, and it should write out the full uh, date here as well. Notice also, if you use any other date, if you say December, that's not gonna work. It's just gonna interpret that. It's not gonna parse that as a date. It's gonna just put December in there, right? Um, so that is one tricky thing about it. But yeah, that's just how it works. And, and yeah, I think um, there's probably some official time to put in there as well, if you want to include time in there as well. But, you know, just know the important thing is like, if you change it to some other number, it's not going to work. So like in this case, you know, if we change the two to something else, the, the like days, what looks like the days of the month is actually using the, the final, you know, of the 2006, like it's using like the years of the day. So either way, January, sec January 6th, or January 2nd, now I'm confusing you, January 2nd, 2006. That is the right date. Uh, all right, so now we have actually, like if we look at this file, okay, look how simple this file is, okay? Look at, look at it, all right? 
we just got a couple of lines and um, we, we have a lot of content. We can already include reading time, word count, the name of the article, what it kind of looks like, give people a preview of it. Um, and I think you can also put, you should, I'm not entirely sure how to call these actually, um, but you should be able to put tag names as well. Let me actually try, you might have to say params tags, because I think that's how tags work. Um, yeah, I don't know, shoot. There's definitely a way to, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, here they are, yeah. Let me, let me move them above that line. So you can put params tags, um, and that can include the tags as well, so we can say like, uh, let me add in some more breaks, tagged uh, with blah, blah, blah. Um, and I know there's a way to change, let's see, how do you get rid of the, there's some like delimiter function, maybe like delim, uh, comma, I'm making things up if things break. Okay, I'm gonna look this up, I'll be back in one second. Okay, I see how to do it. I did it in my header, my header file, or some, I think someone else like PR'd this because originally it was just like using the ugly format. All right, let me explain what this is doing. I'm just gonna like paste it in because we haven't talked about width yet, but I guess, again, it's a learning moment. Let me get rid of this. Uh, tagged with blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now you'll see it says tagged with technology, comma, software, comma, crypto. Okay, so what it is doing here, actually what we should do, well, I'll explain what's happening first. Um, so what it's doing, so with, how with works is it gets a variable and it can be anything, it can be a parameter, it can be like, it can be truncated or something like that. Um, and then it performs the stuff that is before the end, okay? So it, it puts this delimited by, you know, there's, you can look up the delimiter command, um, but it puts those uh, with commas delimiting them. Um, so with how that works is if there is no content there, it just like doesn't print it out, right? Um, so I, I, when I, I'm going to do a video on like giving arguments to a short code, probably the next video, and that is going to, it's going to have width all over the place, but it, it just know that that works. Actually, okay, let me think about this. So this is like looping through, because let me think. Um, so in this case, if we don't have a tag, we still have tagged width. So what we want to do, I think, is uh, let's get rid of this and put it in here, I think. Was that going to work? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So in this case, in the articles that don't have tags, you're not going to have this because it's going to do with parameters tags. And um, if there's no tags, like it's not going to input this text in, input this text tagged with. I'm like I'm running out of like juice to like say words at this point. <laughs> Either way, computationally, okay. So our site, if we look at our site, it's uh, actually very ugly right now in terms of like, you know, I haven't again, I haven't done any styling. But look at the stuff we're doing. Like, look at the stuff with this like little file that's basically 20 lines, less than 20 lines, and could be slimmed down. Um, we already have this pretty uh, like, you know, we have article previews, we have words, we have read counts, all of this stuff that is built into Hugo and we can so easily add and extend. Oh, actually, you know what I should do? Oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna do, I, I'm gonna draw this article to, to a close, but what you could do is each of these tags has a link to the tag itself. So you just put that, that's another thing for you. Try that yourself, try that at home, kids. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is the kind of stuff you can do and you can customize it to your own liking. Like this is, you know, a lot of, if, if someone is using like some dynamic WordPress site that's taking a million years to load, this is the kind of stuff they're using WordPress with and you don't even need it. Like this is something that Hugo does absolutely automatically, absolutely fantastic. So, uh, oh, I need to fit it. I haven't finished and put up this article. I need to finish that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this article to a close. I think in the next video, I'm going to talk about short codes again because you can script them. But as I said, let me, let me give you a preview. I kind of gave you a preview actually in the, in the last video. I'm, well, I may have said what I was gonna do. Um, but I, I might, uh, we might either use this or we might use another one, but I'm gonna talk about how to uh, create, not just have short codes, but have short codes take arguments so that you can do really complex stuff uh, like make very complex HTML without any kind of effort. You know, you just, when you're writing text, you don't have to worry about it. So that's about it. Hopefully that's given you a view of what the kind of stuff that you can do in Hugo. And I'll see you guys next time.